And we are back yeah. on the freaking drink with this awesome person we call Pamela and Endangered Wings. Yes, cheers. <laughs> cheers to you. Cheers to you. Thank you for again for being on the show. This is awesome. No, thank you for having me. This is my first podcast, which is unusually how nervous I am because I, I can speak in the museum in front of 100 people, no problem, once I get on a roll. But this is... This is, I think it's because it's on the computer, it's all... Yeah, that's probably it, because you're not used to, like, a camera just staring at you, and you're just like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to, like... Yeah. Tell me your feedback, please! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... But, uh, no, you're totally good. You're totally good. Actually, actually, almost, like, talk to me like you're in the museum. You're just, like, spilling out butterfly facts at me. Oh, okay. All right, I got a cute one for you. Um, and go. <laughs> <laughs> how do you, uh, do you, how do butterflies taste? Mm. Uh, protein like? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, not what do they eat? How do oh, they oh, eat? I'm sorry. I don't know. Colorful, I guess. No, they actually use their feet to taste food. Oh, really? Yeah. So when they land on a particular leaf or a flower, that's how they can identify a native species or a food source. What? That's so weird. Yeah, so like their so feet cool. act like the, like our kind of tongue. Yeah. <laughs> that is weird. Right. Their sense. I'm sorry. Things. I thought. I'm sorry. At first, I thought like you were like asking me like a joke. So I'm like, I don't know. Like <laughs> they taste like this. I'm fucking like I don't know. <laughs> Oh, you're lagging. And you froze. Oh, now, now you're coming back. Okay. Oh, it's um, I'm apparently unstable. That's so true. Oh. Better get that checked out later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, wait, so they, so butterfly, so butterflies taste with their feet yeah that that's cool? interesting well i guess that makes sense but that's still that's still interesting i i would figure don't they have like antennas that they could kind of like feel around them right well it, that doesn't taste that can feel their surroundings they can sense vibrations you know true yeah um you know sense something that's close to them you know or not no but they uh yeah they taste through their feet um let's see what else, other kind so that always cracks the kids up they love that one so you know make you know. Ew. Well, I'm an adult child, so just keep on rambling off facts. <laughs> All right. How about, um, <clears throat> oh, I could show you one. Uh, the blue morpho butterfly. You know what? I, I'm i going to actually, Aiden, can you come here? I'm going to have my, I have a sample. I have a sample. I have an exoskeleton I can show you. Can you get me the blue butterfly on the wall over there? Thank you so much. All right, blue, so blue, it's, blue. Ooh. it's yeah. Well, it's there's a there's a catch to that one. Yes, that one. Hopefully, you can see it. Okay, it's kind of dim lighted here. But I love uh, flash your light on it or something. Your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a great idea. Um, <clears throat> people are they like this one. This one's interesting. Okay. Oh, that does look pretty. Oh, you can see the blue, right? Can you see the blue? Okay. Oh, well. Actually, no. Take take the take the light off of it. Oh. Go. All right, hold on. No, no, you were fine. I oh, can see lid. it. Said the lid. Okay, so let me shut that off. So a, well, I'm figuring that out. The blue morpho butterfly. Ooh, that is pretty. Gosh, isn't it beautiful? Okay, so when you look at this, you see, obviously glare, but you can see this gorgeous. Wait, wait, put put it up a little bit, <laughs> and then face wait, it down a little bit. No, 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 no. Face the actual frame down. Put the camera where it was. Perfect. Okay, okay, leave it just like that. Oh, that's perfect. All right, so we see the color blue when actually their wings are clear. <clears throat> what? Yes. Okay, so how that works, I know it blows everyone's mind, is the rainbow, for example, right? Can okay. You, can you touch the rainbow? No. It's just the spectrum of light, though, that's hitting through the water. Yes. So their wings. Are I know things. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, I know. Really good. That's so true. But that's the best way to explain it. Like you can't touch it, but we can 
we can perceive the colors, the light, you know, we see. Well, yeah, because that's how the, the, the color spectrum is, I guess, extracted or filtered out so you can actually see the rainbow through the water. Yeah. So that blue that we ah. see is actually our interpretation of the light that reflects off of it. Oh, so it's, I mean, in scientific, I guess in more of a scientific way, it's like, the light is passing through the wings, but the only color that's not being absorbed by the wings is blue. So that's being reflected, which you're seeing. Right. And ah. how we see it is not the same as birds see it. They see it, to, you know, completely different spectrum. But I wonder what they would see then. Isn't it interesting? I've actually watched a show on um, how different animals have sight perceptions, which was so fascinating. And I want to say it was Smithsonian. And they covered, for Probably example... Was. Um, uh, a dog perceiving something and he was taking a bath and he was shaking off you know, the water and they did it in slow motion because he could see um, you know, kind of a, a blur would be around him but you could see the water. That was how a dog would perceive. And then they showed um, a hawk that was like up on a building watching the dog shake off and the hawk's perception was it could see every individual water droplet. Wow. Like, you know, and that's how their sight is. And then they took an insect, for example, like a fly that has many lenses and showed what that would look like, which we know a kaleidoscope yeah. is very similar to that, where you would have dozens of these mini pictures, like little frames, and yeah. your tiny brain would have to interpret that. But anyway, so um, the blue that we see is also in our common friend, the blue jay, who actually has clear colored feathers. And we Wait, only... a blue jay actually has clear colored feathers? Is that cool? I'm sorry. It's one of my... Yeah, you could bring up the butterfly, but then you could bring up the blue jay. Yeah, it's fascinating. I know. Go ahead. You got to go. I did not know that now. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think uh, I love I love that I have this. It's so pretty because you can see it in different light sometimes it's it's brown depending on how well, the light when is. you like kind of turn it like when it's like the, when it's facing me i can see the blue but when you face it like another direction like that i can see purple and then the other direction i can actually see black Isn't that's that, so yeah. weird yeah <laughs> right they're fascinating it's so fascinating i think so. that is weird though seriously okay so yeah so let's see um what other kind of facts there's so many really cool things about them yeah, keep 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 hitting them out, throwing them All out right. to me. Um, one of my favorites is in order for the caterpillar to, um, you know, the monarch to turn into a chrysalis. So you have a cocoon, which is a moth, and then you have the chrysalis, which is the butterfly. So in order for them to, I'm sorry, what what was that? I'm sorry. The uh, a cocoon is for yeah. right a moth, and the chrysalis is for a butterfly. What's so, a, is that just a different way of calling a cocoon a cocoon? Like what is that? Yeah, because yeah, most people think they're both cocoons when actually it's a cocoon and a, a chrysalis. And um, I, have, I have some family being very silly right now in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's shaking his tuchus right now? It's lovely. Um, so the only difference is that butterflies are, the cocoons are different than a chrysalis. Um, Cocoons are made uh, sturdier. They're made with silk. Um, they're thicker, and they have bigger butterflies. They have denser wings, where butterflies are, you know, much thinner. They don't need a big um, cocoon. Some, you know, obviously they don't overwinter. The temperament, uh, they're temperature sensitive. Some of them, not all of them. The swallowtail, for example, that's actually overwintering in my fridge right now. I think I have four of them. Or five of them. <laughs> Got to be careful going in my refrigerator or my freezer in my house. You never know what you're. <laughs> what you're Wait, there's with. actually butterflies in your freezer right now, or fridge? In my refrigerator, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, they're. Why? <laughs> um, they're cocoons. Or. Right. Oh, they just love the cold instead of. Yeah, or I have chrysalis. Uh, well, they would normally be overwintering, uh, but this way the birds aren't eating them. You know, it just kind of gives them a head start. Uh, to keep mm. them in for the winter. So I raise them from caterpillars, from eggs. And uh, the last batch is the ones that would overwinter. So I keep them in the refrigerator, which is temper con controlled. And then I get to um, release them. I give them their first meal. So they, you know, they can find a, a source right away. And I let them go. 
or I'll bring him to a friend's or I'll bring him to a school or I'll find a stranger on the street. <laughs> just like, you know. Wait, so can you just, just, just so I kind of could, I guess, put a picture of it in the video later. How do you spell chrysalis or whatever that was? Here, I want me to get you one? No, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have a sample, hell yeah. Yeah, I, I'm like, yeah, I could just go in my fridge. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I have scorpions, I have tarantulas, I have all sorts of stuff I'm trying to mount. That's why. Okay. Um, here, I'm going to mute it because I have, trust me when I tell you, I've got like an opera voice when I yell. So I'm going to mute you just so I don't deafen your listeners. <laughs> Hold on. I mean, that's totally cool. I'd love to hear it too. Okay, wait. Should I get a couple props? I have a couple more props. You would just, I don't know. Yeah. Worst case scenario, we would, you don't show them, but at least they're there, in my perspective. Well, I guess I was just going to show you the difference between a, a cocoon and a chrysalis. Yeah, yeah. Please, please. Right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. You're an awesome assistant back there to help you out. <laughs> he is. Should I, uh, can I, can I get up or should I wait? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go get up. Get, yeah. All right. So, let me see. Let me, let me put my other example here. Yeah, because I'm not sure he he knows what it is. Okay. Let me mute that. Let me mute. All right, guys, we will be right back as uh, Turtle Dame, a.k.a. Pam, gets her stuff. So hold on one second. Unmute. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, this is, okay, this looks like a dried leaf, right? So it would be on a stick. Uh, that's a what? This is actually a cocoon. This is the outside of a cocoon. So if you look in. Yeah. It almost looks like a, like a, like, almost like an open fanny pack. Yes, it does. That's a great description. And it is really, actually, that's a perfect description. Well, it's it's a moth fanny pack. Yeah. So, <laughs> I like that. That's really cool. So that's... You can um, steal that. Yeah, I am. I'm using it in every presentation I do, and I, I'll do the face. And look, I shouldn't do that that way. Anyway, I like that. So that's a moth, so it's large. Um, that's one of the, the silk moths, which... Anyway, I got you enough samples. And then you have something like I have a couple overwintering these. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw my nerdy glasses on now. Get all do it. All right. So I have one in here. This is one of the babies um I raised from an egg. And um it's gonna so it's overwintering in my fridge. Again, climate control. So I have to kind of put it to the side for you. Let's see. Can you see that? Yeah, it looks really, really small. Yeah, it's kind of funky shaped. You can see like little spikes on it. Oh yeah, it kind of has a. It it almost wait. Can you put it up again? Yeah. So is that like a better wait? If I move that. No, I can't see anything now. Besides, okay, there we go. So, oh, okay. 
It looks like a, like a giant caterpillar kind of thing. With yeah. a, I guess with like cat ears on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, that's actually going to be its antenna. That's its face you're looking at. That's its face? Yeah, yeah. Wait, what, 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 is, what is that? Like, just like a cocoon? So that is, I'll show you which butterfly. So that is my swallowtail. So that is one of these, which is a native species. I think I have to tilt it down for you, right? That's perfect. Which uh, species is that? This is a swallowtail. So that's a purple. And then this is the other. This is a male swallowtail. So these are local. And anyway. Oh, so, so the male is the smaller one. I'm sorry to interrupt, but the male yeah. is the smaller one and the female is the bigger one? Yes. Huh. Pretty cool, right? So, and it's the same species, even though they look so different. How, how big can they grow till, like, I guess, in terms of no, wingspan? this is it. This is full size. So. Oh, so that's, like, full wings wingspan, I guess, and full yeah. growth? Yeah. Yeah, so these are full growth. Oh, so that's so a good, what, like, three, four inches? Yeah, at least three, two and a half, yeah. So okay, that's cool. Pretty neat. So that's what that little chrysalis is. It's that little tiny... Oh, the chrysalis looks like, a, like with a, a cat ears on top of it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so um, that's actually its face. Its face is here, and it has its um, antenna crawled up. So I have. Oh, so it was actually fa it, the face, like its face, I guess, was on the gla the the plastic part. Well, it's it uh, yeah, where you looked at the cat ears. Yeah, right? so that's its face right there, and so it is uh, like it's, its little antenna. It's like its little ears. So it does look like that. That's pretty. So cool. right now, that th that's just kind of hibernating in its chrysalis. Yeah. Yeah, and then comes spring, usually May, after we have the last frost, then uh, I release them. And then um, they kind of stick around my yard for a while. They lay eggs, and I, the whole process starts over again. I bring them in and raise them and, uh, and release them. And I have neighbors that stop by and thank me because butterflies are in their yard. And <laughs> No, really. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I do. I like, yeah, but just, you know, burn them up over here for over winter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's cool. Like, I, you know, people who bring their, their kids here, like, hey, do you have any butterflies? Um, oh, you're really like the, the neighborhood butterfly woman now. Oh, my gosh. I'm like the crazy butterfly lady. <laughs> yeah, so you... I mean, you're not the crazy cat lady, but, you know. But I am, if you think about it. And I have a button that says that because we call them... Uh, cats, caterpillars, you know, like I've got 200 cats right now. Um, so <laughs> the first time I'm sitting in my dining room and I, I probably had maybe like six, 600. I had, I'd have to look at my books to see how many I had, but I had a lot of caterpillars. Oh my God. And they're all stacked <laughs> if, in. If you just say I have 600 cats in my house, they'd be like, how are you breathing? <laughs> Well, no. So this is what happened. So I'm, I had a question about something. So I'm emailing one of the, the like the butterfly groups I'm in. And I, I say, okay, so I've got about 600 cats right now. And for the first time it dawned on me, I went, oh my gosh, you know, I was told I would be one of those crazy cat ladies. And I am. I have 600 caterpillars in my house. Oh my God. <laughs> so technically I am the crazy, I am the crazy cat. You know how many like other women would be like freaking the hell out right now oh they may not i warn people they may not want to come in my house you should see i have skull collections spiders scorpions um antlers i have native american um you know necklaces we blows that were handmade i've got some just awesome you know really fossilized squid i love all the yeah so most people would be kind of freaked out i think but it's all educational it's all beautiful it's you know i, I think like you should like when we're done with the show you should definitely like send me like have your or did i just oh, have your phone in landscape mode and just like click record and then just like do a nice really slow <laughs> clip of like just your okay. your i guess your butterfly cage or whatever you have <laughs> i mean if you don't mind because i would love to just put that in put that in the video and just be like hey check this out yeah, it's a bit eclectic. But yeah, I, I, most people um, I don't. Uh, but yeah, people would, like, there's a lot of women, and even probably men too, that would be like, um, no. 
<laughs> emotions. And you're like, yes, bring them all over here. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. But you know, what's funny is obviously the friends that I have, I have great friends. And they know I'm eclectic and they know I'm passionate about, you know, something. And, um, and I think, you know, they kind of respect you for that because I, you know, I tell people, you may not want to go and get a beer in that fridge. You may want to go, in this one. you know, um, because, uh, you know, like right signs, like warning on the fridge, like, <laughs> well, that my friends know. I mean, they obviously know, Pam, can I go in here? Mm, no, you probably don't because yeah, a lot of people are, you can, um, but you probably won't like what you see. Yeah. Are you going to run? I had one friend in particular, this big Texan guy is six, four, um, terrified of spiders. And now there are people who are scared of spiders. Like, ew, you know, they're scary. And then there are people who are really terrified. Like arachnophobia is a very, it's a serious thing. It's a, mm. I, I really had no idea how serious it was. Well, anyway, um, I love Halloween. I'm a, I go crazy for Halloween. Favorite holiday. And one of the things I would do is have the silhouettes of the spiders in each lamp. So with the lamp on it, it had these giant. Oh. <laughs> and then my, you know, my entrance was like this 10 foot tube of spider web that you would have to, you know, kind of maze your way through to get candy. <laughs> You know, he wouldn't come to my house, like at all. Would not even come near my house. <laughs> like we, you know, we played spoons like every weekend, Halloween, like October came. No, so in order to have like my ugly sweater party or something, you know, crazy like that, I couldn't put any spiders up. It's actually very, they're very lonely in the attic right now. I have some really big spiders up there. <laughs> So. I kind of don't blame him because I'd probably be freaked out, but at the same time, I'd be like, ooh, this is interesting. I'm not touching it, but it's cool to look at yeah yeah uh, yeah i have uh, my best friend is terrified of snakes you know i i love installing ponds that's a really nice feature to have to help with biodiversity in your yard right you need a water source you need a food source you need shelter um so uh the first thing he you know he said to me is oh god no ponds bring snakes i i you know which i get you know some people are you know everyone has their thing but me now i've had you know, Goliath tarantulas crawling on me that are, you know, the size of a plate. You know? Oh my God. Yeah. Um, you know, that, I that I would definitely freak out about. I just, I would be like frozen solid, but be like, can you get this thing off of me now? <laughs> yeah. I got some great pictures of those. Yeah. They don't, they don't scare me. If anything, I mean, there's things I respect, you know, if I'm working with, um, let's say, uh, an Arabian spitting scorpion, that thing could really mess me up. So, you know, I am very cautious with some of the things I, I, uh, I work with, but I, I love them. I think they're all unique. Like, okay, we're talking facts. Scorpions, for example, I know it's not butterflies, but scorpions are actually fantastic mothers, if you can believe it. Fantastic they, mothers? Yes, they're amazing. Explain um, why. Okay, so their gestation period is about 21 mm. months. If you look at, um, no, I'm sorry, is nine... 10, 11 months because an elephant is 19, right? So they have a very long... The station as in like... How, old, how long they have the eggs. Right, right? okay. Um, Just for those so, that don't may not know what that means. Oh, sorry. Yeah, or maybe. Um, when, when they do hatch, they carry them on their back until their first molt, which a molt <laughs> is when, um, when you grow, like in all bugs, all erect, you know, uh, arthropods have an exoskeleton, like a hard shell, like a crab, right? Crabs have that hard shell on the outside. Um, so with their, their, all right, I'm trying to think, I'm like, let me think how I could do it where I'm not over. Explain it the best you can. And if not, as you go, I may just ask be like, can you just define this really quick? <laughs> like yeah, what just... exactly are you talking about? Um, yeah. <sighs> All right, so... Because there's a lot of things about butterflies and scorpions that I don't even know about, so... Oh, okay. So they hold their... Okay, so I was explaining molts. Um, so as you grow, you can't just break open your shell. You need to shed it and then re-harden. That's why there's soft-shell crabs, for example. They're, they don't okay, have, yeah. They haven't hardened yet. They're exoskeleton. So they hold the babies on their back until they have their first... It's called the molt when you grow out of that. And then they help rear them to the point where they break up food and will feed them. If, um, you know, same thing, there's a high mortality rate just because they're eggs and that's the way nature is, the best of the best, right? Um, fine selection. She will, and I've seen this and it's documented, but she will separate them. Like she'll break pieces of food off to them and she will separate them if they're fighting. Like 
This is an insect. I mean, isn't that amazing? Wait, so, this is still for scorpions or this is for... Yeah, this is scorpions. I know, I changed what? it. She was like, hey, hey, no fighting over here. Yes, like, <laughs> badass. And how about... Don't, don't make me spike you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe use my tail on you. Yeah, really. But, like, 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 our parents would be like, wooden spoon or, like, belt. She's like, don't make me get this thing. Nope, you, you don't want it. Nope. Don't make me do it. <laughs> It's raised up. I will stop right now. <laughs> hey, 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 Chris. We don't want to repeat last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think, uh, you know, I some of the species I work with, I, I find is absolutely fascinating and, and beautiful. So I don't know. I guess it's weird, but not too many girls in my field to like doing what I'm doing. I'm just so, like I said, I think they're amazing respectful you know i love learning chemical compounds and how they you know blend in how about structures bees i mean why haven't we modeled our houses after you know an octagon shape b which is the perfect shape in in nature we're still doing boxes What's so there. important about that like why would we model our house after a bead i mean yeah think about the. it's cool we're getting up we're we're moving on to another insect so keep going okay say so, why right, because you said facts so i just i'm sorry my head's just going like, it's oh, all right. Man. Keep going. I'm just helping segue. Uh, yeah. So I, I think um, I find it uh, just really interesting how much we can actually learn from things. Okay. Here's another one just because it's totally fascinating. Alzheimer's, right, is actually a hardening of the brain. So, wait, 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 wait. Really quick. Yeah. We'll, we'll go back to, we'll go to Alzheimer's hardening of the brain. However, just answer the question about the uh, the bee, the um, octagon house and the bee. Oh, why? Okay. So it is it is proven to be the strongest structure because of the shape. Really? So you have eight sides and they're all exactly, you know, sim it's all symmetrical. So it's not right. only resistant because it's um, the way that it's shaped. So it would withstand tornadoes, high winds, you know. They I was about to say it might withstand, uh, you know, high forest sea level rising flooding and stuff like that too. Or... You know, we have little tiny trailers in the middle, like Tornado Valley. You yeah. Know, kind of, you know, there's so many different things that we can learn from insects. So really, I think huh. you know, like if we look at that, that's why aren't we modeling things after nature? We're starting to. Some things are starting to, but there's other things where yeah, well, they're becoming. We're making buildings more greener and more, uh, I guess, self-reliant. Yeah, we're, yeah, it's it's getting there. The knowledge is getting there. I definitely believe um, the more people learn that what they can do, what they can ask for as consumers, I think is is changing. You know, mm. a little bit anyway. So, but, uh, yeah, I, um, well, I think there's so much to learn from. There is so much to learn. Or um, you said something like, "What if people don't really, you don't notice that the bugs are missing?" Like, you know, not I do, but I have a I see the smallest movement because I'm used to being in the woods kind of thing, you know. I, I, right, right. That, that's a natural for me. Other people don't see a deer in the road, you know. So if you don't notice the insects are gone, you're not going to make a difference. So that's what you were saying earlier. If people don't notice, um, but that's how you start to notice is there's stuff we need to be um, learning about them and learning how it affects our food. Hey, I like coffee, avocados, watermelon, um, mm. Pineapples, oranges, bananas, you know, I th think about it. Uh, three quarters of our food wouldn't be here. So, yeah, they are uh, fascinating. So did I answer the question about the shape? structure? Yeah, yeah, you did. You did. Okay. That was an awesome answer. So thank you. <laughs> insulated as well. Okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> wait, wait, no, no. Keep, keep going about the insulation. I want to hear this. I, just yeah. wanted, I wanted to hear it all. However, <laughs> before you answer that... We're going to take another short break because we're about to hit 30 minutes. So awesome. really quick. And then we're, yes. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. We're going to keep going. Don't worry. Don't worry. Hold on one second, guys. Stay okay. tuned for the next, the next uh, uh, segment. Really quick. Hold on. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching the drink sustainability warning as you watch the show be sure to clink at your own risk drinks may not appear the way that they seem <laughs> 